The essence of this discussion is uh, to uh, find you on the uh, extent of the Iranian threat uh, to the rest of the world. Are we talking of the emergence of a regional power that seeks its place and role in the existing global system? Or do we talk about uh, the emergence of a power which uh, seeks to destroy this uh, system? Now, being an intelligence officer for the last uh, 50 years, I was brought up, like any other intelligence practitioner, according to a professional yardstick that measures the uh, enemy based on two components. The first one is the enemy's intentions, and the second is its capabilities. Following Iran for the last 50 years as an intelligence officer, serving as an intelligence officer for a few years in that country and speaking its language, I'd like to uh, name uh, just a few facts, not conclusions, not assumptions, that sum up the uh, Iranian equation of intentions and capabilities. Now, fact number one is uh, the story about the uh, Iraq-Iran war. Towards the end of it, in uh, 1988, thousands of uh, Iranian young boys dressed in white, green bandanas attached to their forehead, the book of the Quran in their hands and the key to heaven hanged on their necks, marched towards the uh, minefields of the front line of the war exploding the, the um, mines with themselves in order to open the way for the following Iranian army. And that act would, was accepted and blessed, uh, and blessed by the uh, then Iranian, s s Iranian spiritual leader Khomeini. Fact number two, immediately after the war, the Iranians uh, debriefed the war, trying to find out the reasons why they lost it. And they reached the uh, conclusion that uh, the introduction of surface-to-surface uh, -surface missiles and rockets and chemical weapons by the Iraqis to the uh, battlefield caused them to lose the war. This insight encouraged them to uh, um, decide to pursue a uh, full-fledged non-conventional capabilities, chemical, biological, long-range missiles, and nuclear. Now, in the early 90s, we have uh, discovered uh, uh, the fact that uh, the Shiab-3, which was the uh, centerpiece uh, uh, long-range missiles, of Iran was designed to uh, reach the range of uh, 1,300 kilometers. Just a glimpse at the map uh, will show you that uh, this range covers the whole of Israel if, this, if the missile is being launched from the western side of Iran. At that point, we uh, knew that uh, the Iranians not only are building a uh, new deterrent against Iraq, but also a building an offensive strategy non-conventional against Israel. Later on, intelligence sources uh, uncovered the fact that uh, the Iranians also designed for the uh, Shia 3 a warhead which can carry a nuclear bomb. And here's, here comes the question, what the hell, a country that claims that its uh, nuclear development is meant only for peaceful purposes, need uh, nuclear warheads. Fact uh, yeah, five, Iran these days is uh, the number one destabilizing factor in the Middle East. It is involved for many years now in uh, South Lebanon with the Hezbollah, 
It supports the reactionary regime of uh, Bashar al-Assad in uh, Syria. It uh, is meddling in, uh, in Iraq, uh, gradually but surely turning this country into the next Finland vis-a-vis -vis the Soviet Union at the end of World War II. It coheres and uh, agitates the Gulf states, and it provides arms that start its way from Iran through the Gulf to uh, Yemen, then to uh, Sudan, and then to Egypt, to uh, the Sinai Peninsula, and from there to uh, the Hamas in, in Gaza. And please note that uh, Israel geographically is situated just in the middle of this uh, circle of uh, countries. Now, in order to sum up uh, the uh, uh, topic at hand, uh, we need to say uh, just a few words about the main uh, tenets of, uh, of the uh, uh, Shia belief. And the first point is that uh, uh, the uh, spiritual leader is considered to be infallible in the sense that uh, 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 is, he is the intermediary between the God Almighty and the believers. And every word that he says comes directly from uh, the God Almighty. Second, the Shia does not, does not accept the uh, idea of uh, coexistence of any kind. The world is divided into two parts. One part is the part of the Muslims. The other part is the part of the, of the infidels. And the believers should... Uh, fight the infidels either to convert them uh, to become true Muslims or to eliminate them. And the uh, uh, third uh, main uh, point is uh, uh, the fact that uh, suicide for the sake of uh, God is uh, a blessed commandment in the, uh, in the Shia. It has been said a lot about the question whether the Iranian leadership is pragmatic or messianic. Um, just three uh, short comments on this one. The first one is the fact that uh, there is no doubt that uh, the Sharia plays a major role in any decision-making process of the Iranian leadership. Now, this is a uh, um, qualitative kind of a yardstick in which you cannot uh, precisely gauge it or, or, or calibrate it. Second point is that uh, being an intelligence officer, I cannot but to make my recommendations to my political masters based on the worst case scenario. And the third is that uh, I believe that we've already established the, uh, the existence of, uh, of intentions of on one hand and the uh, capabilities on the other hand, which means to me that uh, the Iranians had already made their choice, and the only one missing link is the time, which we don't know. Bottom line is uh, the uh, proposition of uh, sitting idle, waiting and doing nothing, waiting until Mr. Khamenei gets his uh, long distance call from uh, the God Almighty and immediately after pushes the uh, nuclear button is uh, just mind boggling. 